greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West, Senior Fellow at the Media Research Center. You know, a lot of folks are talking about the chemical weapons attack in Syria and the United States of America, along with uh, Britain and France's response to that attack. But there's a different type of attack that is going on here in the United States of America, which I think we should all find very disconcerting. Just last week, we saw the Facebook CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, testify before Senate and House committees. One of the things we must realize is that Mr. Zuckerberg did a fantastic job being very well rehearsed and very well practiced. But when it came down to the seminal questions, this Facebook censor, he really did do a not so good job of dodging that question. Case in point, when Senator Ted Cruz of my home state here in Texas asked him about diamond and silk and how they were told by Facebook that they were unsafe for the community, Mr. Zuckerberg stumbled through that answer. And for Mr. Zuckerberg to say to us, the American people, that Silicon Valley, where Facebook and a lot of these uh, social media tech giants are located, is really replete with a certain type of ideology, ideological philosophy. And that is the philosophy of liberal progressive socialism, the left. And think about this. Mr. Zuckerberg said that there are some 20,000 people that he has at Facebook whose responsibility is to make sure that they monitor and make determinations and decisions on what is hate speech. I think any of us can certainly agree with we don't want to see the ISIS videos or Islamic jihadist videos or we don't want to see neo-Nazis or white supremacists there, but what really is the value criteria that these 20,000 individuals are using if they are located in the heartland of liberal progressive thought, civil Silicon Valley? So we need to start to think, do we have free speech in the United States of America, or is this acceptable speech or accepted speech? And if that be the case, who is making the determinations? Who are these 20,000 people at Facebook? You know, the Media Research Center, which I am so honored to be a part of now, has done an incredible job with a censorship report that looks at these social media tech giants, such as Google, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and they have found some very well, things that should, should concern us all when it comes to our First Amendment freedom of speech. Look at Dennis Prager with YouTube and how YouTube has suspended him away just because of the educational videos of Prager University. We just talked about Diamond and Silk and the fact that someone at Facebook determined that they were unsafe for the community. Well, what community is that exactly, Mr. Zuckerberg, that they are unsafe for? Because if you have two African-American female women who just happen to be conservative, how is it that their speech, how is it that their platform is unsafe? I don't know. And I think that's a very important thing that Mr. Zuckerberg failed to answer. Also, when you think about how Google arrays the different search engines out there, for instance, there have been many times I've gone to just Google myself, and the very first thing that pops up are negative articles from five, six, seven years ago. Nothing current. So who is doing the arranging of the search engine for Google. Consider the congressional representative from the state of Tennessee, Marsha Blackburn, who wanted to put out a message on her Twitter account uh, about a pro-life stance, a pro-life statement, and Twitter blocked her from doing that. But ask yourself, how, oft how often, as Senator Ted Cruz asked Mark Zuckerberg, how often have we seen Planned Parenthood or some of the other leftist organizations be censored or not allowed to have their speech freely uh, accepted on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter, Instagram, or any of these social media platforms. We have a serious issue here in the United States of America. And the Media Research Center is showing truly why they are so valuable, why they are so viable and so relevant to today with this censorship report. And I think that every single one of you should read this and you may be shocked at what you see. Because the thing about the United States of America is that we should have the free exchange of thoughts, perspectives, and insights. And no one should claim that they need to run to a safe space. Just last week, I also had the opportunity of speaking on two college campuses, Clemson University and the University of Texas. When you talk to these young conservative students, the stories that they tell of the, the travails that they have to go through against the administration, against professors, and then also against other students, it will send chills down your spine. Why is it that in an academic environment, certain thoughts, certain uh, viewpoints are not accepted and allowed. We all know what happened at UC Berkeley. We all know about this group called Antifa. 
And don't you find it funny that Antifa stands for anti-fascism when they actually want to go out and keep other people from being able to speak because their views are opposing theirs? So the Media Research Center has done an incredible job for us to make us aware of what is happening on our social media platforms and realize that every single one of these social media platforms is controlled by the liberal progressive left, which is what Mark Zuckerberg admitted to because that's the root of Silicon Valley. So we need to be aware of this, and we need to support Media Research Center and the research that they continue to do to expose the leftist media. Because we cannot exist in a constitutional republic that denies us our most important right, that First Amendment right of freedom of speech, freedom of expression, the right to petition our government for redress of our grievances. But if you also understand that the left is after our Second Amendment right, which enables us to be citizens and not subjects, we lose these first two rights, our First and Second Amendment rights, as constitutional conservatives, then what is the fate of the United States of America? And to me, the loss of our freedom of speech is worse than a chemical attack.